All right, in the last episode, I was showing you my fake Ferrari Testarossa, and then I broke something, and I left you hanging. And I'm gonna tell you what happened. So basically, uh, I was goofing around, and these wheels are aluminum weld wheels. Now, welds are known to be fragile. They're a very lightweight drag racing wheel and they're kind of pressed together aluminum and basically the wheel bent and was hitting the caliper so i literally just took the wheel off and beat the ever-loving crap out of it with a sledgehammer until i thought it was flat and it's good enough to drive on it's not perfect i've ordered another replacement wheel that's a real 1989 wheel but they still make the pro stars I've ordered another wheel that'll be here in a day or two. You could still drive around on it. I wouldn't go high speeds on it, but I've been driving it around. It's been okay. It's just a little bit wobbly. It could be better. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go over to my buddy Chris's place, uh, King Caddy Daddy from the other videos, who has the Testarossa and the Diablo. And we're going to take a look at his real Ferrari Testarossa and compare it to this one and see what the difference is between this fake Trans Am Turborosa kit car versus a real 1989 Ferrari Testarossa. Let's go check it out. Okay, as seen in the uh, previous video with the caddy daddy over here, um, he's got an actual real Testarossa. We're gonna compare an actual real 89 with the fake 89. Looking at this thing up close, now that I've been driving mine around for a while, there's similarities that I see that are like right on, and then other things that I see that are just, it's not even close. The, how refined it is, first of all, um, versus the kit, the location of certain things. Um, like, like if you're just like looking over there at the car, you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of, that's yeah. But when you get up on a real one, um, you, and like if these two were next to each other, it would be painfully obvious. Yeah. But like driving down the street, like that looks legit, right? It like it looks like, like wow, there's a Testarossa over there. Until you get up on it. Until you get up on it, yeah. This is really nice. This this mesh here is the same stuff we use on our Delor Delorean time machines. It's the exact same material. And now that I see that, I'm gonna put some on my car. This the way this grill is done. Uh, the thing is, is this is much larger than on the back of my car, and we're going to compare them next to each other. But what I think the most glorious thing about this car is the interior. It is so, it is so me and gorgeous. I want to put this interior in my car. Look at that. Holy, look how big the footwell is. So amazing. I mean, the, 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 the level of distance you have to travel to get in this car, that's a full, like, what, 14 inches or something? I mean, you have to really walk into this thing. Huge amount of distance. You know, it's gonna be funny when I show you how the sill is on, on mine, but like, it's interesting how there's almost two sets of scoops. You know, you've got this scoop here. See, I don't have that. I have only one scoop, but Oh, my lord. You get in like a pro. Most people can't get in that well. Well, it's not too different getting in my other one. Wow, what a little foot box, though, huh? It's like the pedals are over here and the steering wheel's over here. I'm surprised, though. I have the exact steering wheel. My steering wheel is this steering wheel. So that's the same. The horn button is the same. Um, it's one of the sweetest sounds in yeah, car history. The horn on this thing. I, I, mean, I got to get the. I got to figure out what the horn is and put that horn in. Beautiful sound. Um, this interior though is just giving me a chub. This is. I want to recreate this as much as possible and maybe put it in that car. <laughs> this interior is very video, Bob. That it is very. Um, but good lord, um, seeing this shifter. I'm sure is the brake brake set okay so like just first and second it's it's in 
your leg. I mean, you kind of have to, I don't know. I don't know how easy it would be to drive this. Does this go back more? Yeah, it do actually does go back more. I like it up a little bit. Okay. And I'm six foot, but you're a little taller. So, I think that this thing should be a little bit more dog leg that way, you know, because, oh boy, that clutch, whoo. Oh, drive the Diablo and then- Oh, that takes like, effort. That's an easy, that clutch is like butter compared to the Diablo. You know, that thing is an automatic. I know they never made an automatic one of these. I had a totally, dis a thought that would just disgust every Ferrari owner that would just, they would just punch me in the face. I'd love to find one of these with a bad motor, put like an LS3 in it with an automatic transmission. Yeah, I'll come over and punch you in the face. Because the engine drivetrain system in this thing for the time being was pretty awesome, but by today's standards, it's not that fast, really. I agree, 390 horsepower, it's not that you fast. Know, my Cadillac CTSV would have whooped this thing's ass. You take a LSA supercharged motor, put that in here with an automatic, and you'd have an everyday driver car that you would not have to do an engine out every 10,000 miles, that you could drive the ever-loving shit out of this thing, and let the haters hate. But if I could find one of these with a bad motor, that's exactly what I would do, and let them hate. So, but, you know. I know of four of these, four of them right now that are being converted to electric. That's also a good idea. I'm not opposed to. If you're gonna do it, I say you go electric. You can put a thousand horsepower mm -hmm. in one of these. But then you're very limited in range. And you're pretty limited in range with an LSA. My CTSV wagon, one of the, I had two of them. The reason I got rid of them is because um, they had 15 gallon tanks and got 10 miles a gallon. You had to fill it up every single day when driving in Dallas. Cause you'd go 50 miles one way, 50 miles the other. You were at a quarter of a tank, it was time to fill it up. And you had to fill it up every day. My Rolls Royce Phantom actually gets over 20 miles a gallon with a 26 gallon tank. So I can drive it around all week long without having to fill it up. That's incredible. It, it actually gets the best gas mileage out of anything. And I've been driving the white Ferrari the most because it really is the most, pra believe it or not, the most practical and comfortable of all of my cars. I mean, not counting the Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce is the most comfortable car. But, um, I don't know, I'm just in love with that thing. And I'm, but I think that if I was driving this around, which is a great GT car, it's a great touring car. It's very comfortable. I've heard they have great air conditioning. Is yours good? AC is pretty yeah, good. So I've heard that as a driver car, but only if you're highway driving. I think driving this thing in the city, like up and down Las Vegas Boulevard would suck. This is a grand tour. You don't you want know, to drive in traffic with this. That clutch weighs 50, 60 pounds. You get used to it. Like, I, uh, you gotta put considerable effort into that. And I'm, I don't know how tall these gears are. One day you'll let me drive it if we ever get it running. What do you mean running? <laughs> <laughs> no, it runs. It's just, you know what I'm saying. This interior <laughs> though, it, um, it is so, Fucking gorgeous. The, even the headliner. Are these the, these aren't the seats that came with this car? No. Um, I've been accused a few times of people thinking that it's a factory race option. It was not. Whoever owned this, uh, somewhere along the line, threw oodles of money at it. This wasn't the interior that was in it. It probably had the saddle and the brown interior. Probably had the the. This was black. This was brown. This was probably saddle. I'm just guessing. I do not know what color the original interior was. It is an original white car. Mm -hmm. What was in here? Was it red? Was it tan? I don't know. But th these are just some kind of like race seats that they put in there, but they're comfortable. But I, I really like the square Ferrari headrest with the embossed prancing horse on the top. And I actually found a set of seats, but they were like 1700 a piece used. And I was thinking about buying them and having them recovered. But, um, you know, it's, how much money can you throw at a fake Ferrari? It'll never be any cooler than it is. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to decide, do I want to put $7,000 worth of wheels on it and $10,000 worth of interior on a $15,000 kit car? Like, maybe I should just throw more money and buy an actual one of these, you know? But these have, when you could get them for 85, I've even seen them for less a couple years ago. But now they're more, much more, double that. Double that. They're like 150. Mm. 
for a good one. I, there was one that just sold on eBay for, I think, 98 Wow. You know, they're out there, but it's going to need a full service. You know, the people that sell them cheap, it, it, it was pretty ratty. You know? Yeah, I've seen some This one's nice. I've seen some terrible testerosas. This one is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. But, like, if I were to buy one, it would be this one. I would buy this from you if you ever sell it, if I could afford it. I'd have to sell a kidney. But um, this is exactly how I would want it, just like this. Like, you know, this is, like, video bub spec. You would think... Now, I wouldn't... I would also like a maybe a red one, but I'm really enjoying the white, especially here in Las Vegas. I'm really liking the white. Look at me, I'm wearing white. This is crazy. I, agree. I always wanted a black one or a red one. And I didn't really want white, but the white is really grown you on You cannot me. go wrong with red. You can't go wrong with red. Coarser red, but I think the white with the red interior, same with the Countach, just like Hoovy's Countach. The white with the red interior when it comes to these sports cars, I think is fantastic. Very time period, very 80s. I love this dash. I love the, the, the highlighter orange interior dash. It's like... The, the, it's just like the colors are so vibrant. And I've actually thought of, you know, I've found these dash clusters in the, in the pod and I thought about putting it in the car, you know, like I, if I wanted to, cause I have the capability of doing this cause I'm stupid. I could put this whole <laughs> interior in that car. Well, it's like, I have the ability to make things happen and I'm dumb enough to do those things, you know? I've never understood the hidden radio thing, but it's cool. It is cool. I don't understand it either. It's sort of like on my Cadillac, the radio popped up like this. I'm sorry. And uh, it was just dumb. It was just like, just have it there. Wait till you see how the glove box opens. You'll enjoy that. We need the key in it to do it. Oh. So that's windshield wiper, turn signal. What is that? That's your headlights. Oh, that's the headlights. You turn them. Yep. Key needs to be in it, but that's how they go on. All right, let's, and wow, this console here. And they're all beautiful. Look at all those. Most of them get sticky and faded. Yeah, and no, the, the quality, oh my God, is so good. Just so well maintained. I don't know about the, I like this little carpeted area, that's funny. Um, I don't know about this automatic, That the, the that's time. annoying. The headliner, oh, this upper console. Oh, and the speakers. Oh, did you, uh, so yeah, did did they put these subs in? They put the subs in. You can see that there's a CD changer. There was, CD changer. They redid the back end of it to put a stereo in, which is pretty incredible the way they did it. Is there it. space up front, the frunk? Yep, definitely space up front. That's where the uh, amplifiers are. This is the, what is that? That's to pop the front trunk. Okay, we'll And then that. the other one's to pop the rear. Okay. You can watch me get try to get out of this thing embarrassingly. All right, I'll laugh at you if you can't do it. Well, you're my, the, again. My, you're a little taller than I am. My other car, the other car over there is just as. <laughs> well, if you can open the door all the way, that helps. This door <laughs> is so much smaller than the one on my other car, though, because like that's really the, the length is probably the same. It's just that my door goes to like here. You know, like a Trans Am door is like, is the size of a human. I was actually impressed you got out of there pretty good. Well, I've had practice with that other car. So yeah, again here you have, we talked about this before. This, basically this is two DeLorean. It's just Bosch uh, Jetronic mechanical fuel injections, but two of them, the same one that's on the DeLorean. These are the same exact cold start valves, uh, probably the same warm up regulators. You know, all of these connections are the, are the same, um, you know, same fuel accumulator. So that Bosch system was used on a lot of cars. I love how all the engine accessories are where you could not get to them on any level. Like all the belts are like, you can't get to those at all. Like you have to take the engine out to change the alternator belt. It's uh, basically one of the fun things about owning a Ferrari. Have you ever done an engine out service on no, it? No, I have not. But, uh, See, and I, I think that, like, you know, the, the, I guess they call this the box, a boxer engine, right? Correct. So, you know, it has a unique sound and a unique power. And, like, I'm telling you, I would take this engine out and I would just keep it, make a coffee table out of it. And then I would put, like, an LSA or something like that in here. 
so that you could drive the car. It's too sweet of a motor to do that. But you don't get to enjoy it. When's the last time you drove this, this thing, this other than 12, to bring it over here? I, I just drove it the other day. Last weekend, I drove it the other okay. way. This 12-cylinder mated with this 2B exhaust, no cats. Would you get in this right now and drive it to Dallas? Sure. You would? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because that I know. Let's do it. That over there, I would do it. That thing, I set the cruise on that. It's You live far away from me. I set the cruise on that thing, air conditioned blasting, drove over here getting 15 miles a gallon or whatever. No, these are good cars. They're, I've they, heard they're that, just, though. They're just high maintenance. They're but high maintenance, but good cars. But you keep up on the maintenance. It's like a hot chick. And they run great. Yeah, it's like a hot chick. Exactly. You got an entire equalizer. What the fuck? That's old school stuff, baby. Yep. A lot of room in here, actually. Yeah, there is a lot of room. I like how this it's, opens, though. Oh, I like how you can feet. access this stuff here. That's nice. It's interesting. This thing is so clean, bro. I like. I just went to IKEA. I went to IKEA and that stupid thing, and I went and there's there's a trunk and it's full of IKEA bullshit. You know, like I do stuff like that. I would take this to Smith's, to the grocery store. I go to Walmart. And that, and if because if I can't use the car as my car, I don't want it. I don't have garage queens. This has been pretty much a garage queen, but again, it could be driven anywhere. I'm really, it's interesting. Wait till you check out the door handle situation on that car, because here, like it's it's right there, and it, you just have a regular kind of door handle. Mine is weird. I'm, I want to show it to you, and I, I like how this thing. I need to recreate this this little situation here because mine doesn't have that and see these don't go all the way through either that one that's interesting i don't think that my buddy paul when he built that car had one of these in his possession when he built it i think he eyeballed that thing because if he'd have had one of these in his actual possession i think he would have done some things differently you know i think he literally eyeballed that car when he made it because there's just certain things he could have done. I want to try to recreate this window situation. You can buy this glass for like 300 bucks a piece on eBay. I'm shocked. That's a pretty good price. Between three and 600. So I was thinking about literally buying two of these. And actually the trim around it's worth more. See this trim here? That goes for four or 500 bucks for this aluminum trim. Wow. But the piece of glass itself, I've seen like for between three to 600 bucks. So I thought about buying two of those and either just and just either mounting them externally or actually cutting into the wood but i don't think there's enough room so if you have a tape measure i'd like to borrow it i want to measure some things i think you're getting crazy i think you should leave it and enjoy it as is i told you i'm stupid <laughs> yeah. i'm dopey you're gonna be cutting out windows eight thousand oh, yeah. dollars in wheels enjoy that yeah i'm an it's idiot beautiful it looked when i pulled up and i first saw the front end of it i thought it was my car sitting outside a little rash there I really want these wheels. And these are what, are, these are 15s? 16s. 16s, okay. Which they're hard to get tires for now. Oh yeah, it's true. Oh, even this louver here, that's interesting. So it's blowing the hot air back onto the wheel. But I really, are, are they offset? Are they both, these look smaller? Or am I kidding? Or am nope, I they're 16s. They're 16s as yep. well. Cause, but I know they're wider in the back. I think these are eights and those are 10s. I think you I'm might be sure. right. I think that's what it is. Maybe they're 10 and a half. I got to I got to Well, I've, I've been looking into wheels. And so uh, this lug pattern is slightly different than the 4.75 on the Trans Am. And so I'd have to put a two or three inch spacer adapter that, that converts the two different sizes as well as out spacing to get the flat wheels. I really want to get the flat wheels on there because that is a huge giveaway. Well, wait but, but this gap is, is, is about right. It's just this one in the back. And we need to get them side by side, and that's the trick. It actually runs like a DeLorean. <laughs> it takes a second, you know. No, it sounds it sounds like two DeLorean engines bolted together. I'm trying to figure out how to get more of a Ferrari sound exhaust. Because the Trans Am has that low bumpery, low RPM idle. And I'm trying to figure out what kind of exhaust that I put on the car to make it sound a little higher pitch and poppy like that. That, I that know, flat. I mean, if you just put a few exhaust on it, it leaves the exhaust. 
the bumper itself. I'm not sure if it was given a sound. This says it's 512 exhaust. Or it says 512 on it. Yeah, I think they number each one. Number 50. How many, how many test roads did they make? Like 9,000, I think? 12,000. 12,000. The 512 is all. They make plenty of them. They only made 9,000 for it. I can sell it with I don't know why this is even covered. I mean, that should be just glass. <laughs> there's an African-American company that made them in glass. Oh. They're really cool looking. They should. I agree. Better look at the motor. Now, how do the windows work? What is this? Oh, that's an ashtray. Of course it is. According to Harry, you can have a proper smoke in it. Yeah. Um, so this is the headlights, just like uh, mine. You see the way they're set up. Oh yeah, they look just like... I gotta say, he got the headlights right on the car over there. You'll see, they're very similar. I can't wait to see them together. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's so much more. Oh, you gotta. Will it will it drop down an idle when it's ready? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can change the whole motor seat. It's just like a DeLorean. Just a warm-up regulator. Once it gets to a certain temperature, it'll change the uh, RPM. forward a little bit. Just a little bit. Right there. This is where you can really tell the weirdness. Like, it's That's like... That's how you get out of one of these. <laughs> this is really where you see the difference. Like, look at the back. Look at the, the height. You know, the width is about right. But like... You know, there's a certain refinement to the real one that isn't on this other one. And also like the way the back bumper is where it's, this one's set up for the European plate and this one clearly isn't. And then you got these little black bumpers. I don't know what those are about. And then of course this lower valance there and this one doesn't have that. Um, the, uh, the top engine cover section is pretty close. You know, this one is like, it's pretty funny. What, uh, this is like vacuum form ABS plastic. And then this is a door sweep. Like, <laughs> I'm peeling that off. That's going to go. The window here is completely flat. Whereas you can see here, it curves around. Um, the placement of my Ferrari badge, for some reason, it's like bent. <laughs> And it's right in the middle, whereas this one, right up along the edge. So for you guys making replicas, you can pay attention to that. My Testarossa badge is pretty legit, but you can see it comes to this line here. And then you see where mine is. It's too far over, and it's like crusty. So it should be here, notated. I also have crossbars here. For support and then this one doesn't seem to have it these just go all the way across um looking at the two hatches this one straight down this one has that traditional firebird curve to it so like there's there's probably enough room to put the window in correctly you just wouldn't have that hatch like if you if you did if you put this window in you could probably fit it in there and the roof lines are pretty gosh darn close. Mirrors are different. Um, you not notice the cut in here of the windshield wiper, which is missing on that car, which seems to have a little bit more of an angular thing. 
I think the headlights are pretty close. Really impressed with the, and, and actually the, the, um, the actual uh, front lights you can see are legit. See those and those? You can see that, that they're the ones that are here and the ones that are have. Uh, supposedly he was using actual Ferrari lights there and I believe it. Um, as Harry's Garage pointed out on his recent video, the Testarossa's always had black lower balances and trims and the 512's didn't. So this car has most likely been repainted. This was probably repainted, and I may do the same thing if I do a touch-up on mine. The size and position, I wish Paul had used the real Ferrari reflectors, just a small thing. You'll notice how large the indentation is for the Spectre Automotive badge that he used to have. And I'm completely blind out here because I can't see the phone whatsoever. But, um, I don't know, looking at the way they are, side by side it's interesting can you you have to turn it on to turn on the headlights uh no i don't think so i think just the key needs to be forward but i can handle that i'm gonna turn mine on let me find my uh they're pretty i think they're pretty legit yeah i mean well not really you see how these are frenched in you know they're kind of recessed and then these are protruding but you know yeah, not crazy bad right what do you think i i'm amazed at how well how close they are i mean it really looks well cool. well the 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 lower lights are legit ferrari lights is from what i understand those are real because you could tell, tell those are exact and the grills are as well the grills look pretty well totally different style grill than this one uh as far as like this one shouldn't have that square mesh behind it. So the square mesh is messing it up. It's interesting how you can open the headlight without turning them on. That's, that's kind of interesting. Not bad though. You know, you figure this car back when a Testarossa was a brand new car selling for 150, 160,000 new in 89 with a two year waiting list. This car was, I don't know, 45, 50,000, you know. So, but yeah, man, when you, when you see the two of them together, you can tell which one's the real one. And I gotta have one now. I really want one. Let's, let's, um, let's pull it up right in front of it so we could see the two of them side by side or, you know, or, or long ways rather. So now seeing them can't see the phone at all out here okay it's so hot yeah seeing them side by side just like the the size of the doors you know the 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 huge huge distance between where the door is to the wheel versus on this one where it's right up against it this is i think this angle right here shows the fakeness of this uh, uh, way more than any other angle the, fr the fr looking at it front on and looking at it back on not so bad but here, this is where the the men and the boys separate. This door, have, check out the door handle on this thing. Like the door, the the width of this. Like reach up under there and open the door, and see the difference. Like that one's more swoopy. This is so much more refined when you open the door. But you see how the door handle is on there? It's actually pretty good. It's pretty good, it's but it's easier to find. And then it I actually, yeah, test too. You too. Look work. at the size of this door. Like it is the, the, the when you open that up and you, and maybe that makes it easier to get in and out. I don't know, but I, it's, I had an 84 four Trans Am in high school. Yeah. And this door brings back memories when I open it. Oh yeah. Except for here. Cause I would have thought that was cool as hell. That's then. cool. Oh yeah. That's the sound. I could do that all day. <laughs> and for Trans Am, that's a great door. That is a great door. I love it. So I think this could have benefited from a bigger door. But I guess it really doesn't matter because, like, you know. But this has a nice solid thunk to it. That's metal fiberglass. What's, you know, actually, I'm really surprised at the build quality of this thing because this is a metal car with fiberglass 
this fiberglass you, you know there's no cracking here after 30 years there's like no separation it doesn't squeak or rattle it's actually in great shape what what i think that he should have done talk about paul who built his car i think that he should have moved the edge of this scoop to the other side of the door right here to, to maybe there and maybe he couldn't do that because this was the access but he could have remotely moved the access to here but if you look at the where that that door only comes to like here you know what i mean in length so if he had we need more gap between the rear wheel and the door even though the line would be here that's fine you know so like if if this was to be redesigned today th those are some some design changes i would have done that's what i mean you have to understand his door starts right here yeah and on your car and that's the difference between having that front engine versus the rear i know but but the thing is is those strakes are so much shorter than these yeah you know so like we could have he could have given more gap you know like even if he'd have just had this start here you know and move we need that extra little gap there that's what's missing and so like it makes it impossible to put that pininfarina badge down there because that's why it isn't there if you can't there's 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 a good we're missing a good six eight inches of, of girth that goes yeah. there like that whole door needs to be shifted and i wonder if you know there's not much you could do about that though my wife tells me the same thing i'm missing six to eight inches of girth yeah. so but some things that he could have done that he could he could have ordered the real Ferrari side marker reflectors pretty cheaply and put those in instead of being a cheapskate and just reusing the Firebird ones because he wanted to recycle as much Firebird stuff as possible. Um, you know, those subtle differences, I think, could have made a difference. But at the same time, you know, this was 1989. Kit cars were the rage. You know, the kit car magazine was, like, huge. You'd go to, like, any... Uh, when you'd go to Chief Auto Parts... Western Auto, you know, remember Chief, right? Yeah, I do. You know, Mr. Kit Auto. Car was right there, like at the checkout. I worship Kit Car, and how I got in, like when I was 16 years old, I tried to order an IFG Lamborghini Kit Car. They were five thousand bucks for the IFG Lamborghini LP5000, they called it or whatever, and it went onto a Fiero. And I was stupid. I didn't know about stretching a chassis and all that. I was 16 years old, and I sent a thousand dollars to these people as a deposit. And then my dad got a hold of me and goes, "You're an idiot. You can't." stretch a chassis and you don't even have a socket set you can't build this so i asked for my money back and they said no it's a deposit so i said well you better send me a thousand bucks worth of parts so they mailed me the the wing they sent me the big wing that goes to the car and i mounted it to the back of my trans am and what's interesting is at that time i was hanging out with paul at specter automotive who did the turborosa and he, he painted the car black for me and he had a set of his Ferrari replica wheels that we put on the car. But you gotta remember that he's added like six or eight inches of hips to this thing. So the wheels that he gave me stuck out past the fenders this far. Mm. If I hit a bump, my fenders would hit the wheel. So there was like a cut line in the in the tire from me whacking the wheels. And how I never popped the tire, I don't know. But the car was ridiculous. It had these big giant Ferrari style wheels with the Lamborghini wing, it was black and had the bra on the front. Remember the bra? I love the bra. And I, <laughs> yeah. I ended up trading that car for an 87 Grand Dam, and I thought I traded up. So, um, yeah, well, 87 Grand Dam, it would be nice if you had it now. Yeah, oh, well, I had the flat back, you know. And uh, I love that car. I, th I love the Pontiacs, and I still do. But uh, people don't understand why I have this car. They, the average person's like, oh, fake it till you make it. You're driving around in a fake car. You, you, must, you probably have a fake Rolex. Fake, fake, fake. Uh, the, the, my connection to the car is that with... Paul Wilkins, who built the car, and how I used to hang out at his shop when I was 16 years old, and how um, emotionally it left a, a impression on me. And now I'm a, you know, custom car builder, known the world around. And that all started watching him turn Trans Ams into these, and that imposed upon me that there's this magic you can do where you can take something and make it into something else that I didn't know was really possible. And I used to sit in this car as a 16 year old teenager and pretend to drive it. And even though I drove an 82 Firebird, which was the same car, but just owning this seemed impossible to me because these things were like 50 grand back then. And, you know, I bought this thing for nothing. I bought it for one tenth the cost of one of those. 
those are 150, whatever. These are, this was 15. And at the end of the day, I still have just as much fun, I think, um, as I would with that. But I really want one of these now because now that I've experienced the vibe, it's, I, I, it's rubbed off on me. I really, really want, I want that one. Some of your car. I want your car. I'll trade you right now. Pink slip to pink slip. Money talks, baby. I'll throw in this red Rolex. It's my, worth like 30. My oh. wife will come over and make a deal with you right now. Ah, oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're so concerned about my safety, mister. Uh, you moved my seat back. Oh, yeah. I need to go up just an inch. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's good. We're good. You good? My first time in a Ferrari Testarossa. Does this make you smile? It makes me smile. Mine doesn't sound that way. That sound, I need that sound. This guy has a Diablo replica in his garage. Really? I see it. And a nice GSXR. We need to do a comparison of his Diablo and your Diablo. Done. I'd be happy to. The suspension on the Trans Am is much softer. It's like driving a Cadillac, that thing. That's sad. Unmistakable. You've actually got better view on your mirrors than I do. It's like, I don't know what it is. The but... view in this car is fantastic. These yeah. Side windows. The side windows help. The mirrors, the large rear window as opposed to my Diablo. Yeah. The view out of this is no problem at all. It's like driving a regular car as far as the... What was you saying about the glove box? Oh, glove box. Let's show you how cool that is. Oh, <laughs> and I can, and mirrors. So I can see myself. How, how cool is that? That is cool. Sex, uh... Yes. And then the radio, of the course. Radio, of course, yeah. Everybody knows about the radio. <laughs> what would have been in there originally? Like an Alpine or? A, um, that was a Lamborghini thing, Alpine. Well, no. With Lamborghini, they were shipped without radios at all, and the dealer chose what was in it. Okay. So, but I don't know what it was like. I imagine it was a plow plug, but I don't really know. So is it one, two, three, four, five? Yep, dog leg. Okay. There's no room to go anywhere. What's the turning radius? Good? Not too bad. About the same. My car. Bit of a slam in a second. No, it ships at the second really nice. Okay. It, uh, it's actually not as warm as I would like the training to be with shifting, but it actually ships very nice. It's got good pull, man. This thing is running great. You were telling me it wasn't running great last I time I saw you. When the when it had bad gas in it, but we that's went what it that. is. we did fuel. Well, pump. that's just we that did. that's that Bosch system. You know, it's it's it needs. It needs to be driven. That's what it wants. It's true. You really, do, with the buy system, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's but right now. It's great. It's doing great right now. It's running cherry. Well, you said you might be interested in selling the car. Probably you're thinking like you might get 175 or something for it. Um, I think uh, that's a pretty good number with how nice this car this is. This car is very nice. That's out of my league, way out of my league. I recommend you drive this as much as possible. Yeah, at the point now, it, it's such low mileage is that every mile seems to cost you money now. Yeah, it's like three to five bucks a mile to drive the car. You know, I, I didn't buy it for that reason, but at the same time, it's always in the back of your head. Yeah. When's it going to be due for another engine out? Uh, it's due now. <laughs> it's done five years ago by the previous owner that I bought it from. Wow.
I can't get over how much I love this interior. It's so sexy. about me is that like I'm that guy I'm the dummy that like peels the stickers off everything and uses it people are like no you should keep it and preserve it no I'm that guy that like my Rolex you know like I peeled the sticker off the back of it people are like no leave the sticker on there you know like well I would buy my toys and I would take them out of the package and play with them and shoot them with BB guns and put them in the pool and people are like no you see the kept it mint in package these are the, we have this culture now of people who want to preserve everything I want all of my stuff to be so well used and ruined by the time I'm dead that no one would want it. Are you saving it for the next generation? Yeah. I don't even like the next generation. I don't, yeah, I hate the next generation. <laughs> all you millennials, zennials, whatever watching, I could care less what you think. Right now, I'm Generation X and zero fucks is our entire attitude. And so the thing about it is if I had this car, I would fucking ruin it. I would drive it to death seats would be ripped up the wheels would be curved there'd be chipped rocks all over the front of it you know and uh so in other words don't buy a used car from me <laughs> my cadillac ctsv i just floored it everywhere i went i went through a set of tires michelin pilots every twenty thousand miles or less wow. on that car especially around a corner like this i would have been sideways just you know I'm looking at how great this stainless sill is with the Ferrari. I wonder if I can buy just this piece of rubber like that. I wonder because that's pretty awesome. Because when you look at my sill, it's just like this rubber material. I got the shoes on. But wow, I mean, the gap. But I guess there's probably the same amount of distance traveled, you know? But like the width of that door versus this one, it's really not that thick, you know? Ooh, I like the marker indicator, very nice. Just the design though of that little scoopy scoop thing. I'm trying to figure out like if I should put something like that on mine, you know? It's like, it's, it's kind of missing, you know, that little makes it different. These seats are very comfortable. Yes. One of my favorite things about this car is the fake Ferrari. It's a real Ferrari key or fob with a GM. That's hilarious, right? Like, I know that's not the Testarossa key. Yours has the folding key, right? Hey, this looks yeah. great, though. But it looks, like, so legit. It's even got the chip in it. Yeah. In the, back in the day. So, yeah. So, same steering wheel. Except doesn't have... Oh, we didn't do the horn in the Ferrari, but the yeah, horn. it is the same steering wheel. Same steering wheel. Same uh, radio, just about. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like a... I put in a cup holder. Same phone. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the most un-Ferrari thing you can do. A cup holder. That's all right. But uh, gosh darn it, I needed a, a drink. Yeah, I'd add one to mine if it was simple. Yeah, how about this? This is funny. I'm liking that. I thought about changing all this out and making it look more like the Ferrari console and putting a fake shifter plate. But really, you know, it's like, first of all, they never put wood in these cars. Yeah, that was not a thing. You want to change too much, enjoy it the way I it know, is. I know, that's what I should do. Enjoy it the way it is. I like it. Enjoy it the way it is. Stop wanting to put all this money into it. Yeah. I wish I could, um, I have it set up to play the Miami Vice theme, but it plays through the phone, so we wouldn't be able to do it. YouTube will shut you down. Yeah, that's true. So it has that low lumbering Trans Am. You know, it's it. This thing runs 2,000 RPMs on the highway. 
So it's got that low lumbering sound, nice soft suspension, pretty quiet, not real rattly, you know. Um, these guys are gonna think it's the same car. But you know, cruise works, tilt. Most most people think it's the same car. I mean, they, at first glance, they look the same and the general public has no idea. That feels pretty good. I love yeah. that V8 power. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a GTA Trans Am, which doesn't suck. No, I agree. And um, I mean, it's not exactly the same experience. Nothing, nothing is gonna be the experience of, of, of that real Testarossa. You know, it's that people are gonna make that argument. Like you can make it look like whatever you want, but it'll never be, it'll never be that. All right, well, this was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for taking me for a ride in the real Testarossa. I love this car. They can find you on YouTube at King Daddy Caddy. King Daddy Caddy. King Daddy Caddy. How is the Daddy Caddy going? It could be a whole lot better if Video Bob well, was Well, but I'm talking about that, that limo. Oh, the limo is running great. We just did a few tweaks to it. The limo is awesome. Matter of fact, Butch Patrick, if you know who that is. Of course, I know, I know who you know who Patrick is. is. He would like to go for a spin. So maybe we'll work something out. Back about 20 years ago, here I go with a non sequitur again. About early 2000, I had a TV show called Video Bob Stupid Movie of the Week. It was a horror show, like a virus show. It was a syndicated show in on about 73 cities. Google it, you'll find it. But Butch was my competition. He had a movie macabre show that ran opposite of me. So we were rivals. But I'm friends with Butch. He's okay. He's a cool guy. <laughs> but I used to be a horror host as well. But I was never on the uh, Munsters. All right. King Daddy Caddy to watch his stuff. And um, thanks for watching me and the Ferrari. For all the haters that are going to talk all the crap about the cars on there, you don't understand why I have this car. I'm not trying to pretend to have a Testarossa. It's my connection to my friend Paul Wilkins who built the car. And if this is your first time watching the video, go watch the one before it, and I'll link it in the video description. Until then, I'm going to go around and pretend to drive that in this. It's fun. <laughs>